Welcome to Endoscopy on Air. Watch Honji Chip and James Lau in the diagnosis and treatment of early gastric cancer. Most part of this lesion, at least at the edge, is slightly elevated, as you can see at the around 10, 9 to 10 o'clock region. But center of the lesion appears depressed. And uh, you can also see here. So I would say this is the Paris 2A plus 2C yeah. lesion, uh, the use of one sign called non-extension sign. So the key is to insufflate the stomach and look for any ridges that you can see on the edge of the lesion that might signify a deep submucosal fibrosis due to lesion invasion, and that would preclude a successful endoscopic resection. So in this lesion, uh, I think this is rather a fold, but not a muscle ridge. So uh, in overall, it's still uh, potentially endoscopic resectable. Uh, the graffiti is helping you because once you perform an, uh, the initial cut with a mucosal flap, the flap will raise up towards the, okay. the proximal part of the stomach. Yeah, we so. start injection from the far side and then go back to the near side. And also at the same time, uh, incision will start on the far side because I generally uh, use the IT2 knife uh, for the gastric resection, ESD. So we start injection in the periphery of the lesion. And once you get a good uh, blab, you can inject on the edge of the blab so that the uh, injection can be efficient and safe. So I would do a full circumferential injection because generally e gastric ESD is okay. I would not do circumferential re uh, injection if I'm doing a uh, ESD for a colonic lesion because uh, colonic lesions are more difficult to control the injection and the, the space inside the colon is much less than the stomach. So uh, that's my uh, personal preference. And also for um, gastric ESD, it's generally okay to do circumferential incision at the start, but uh, not for colonic ESD. So initially I used the flush knife to create two uh, small mucosa incision on one side, on each side of the far end. And then I used the IT2 to drag and start the mucosa incision once towards this side and the other from here to this side. So you can see already uh, I've done trimming for this part. So you can already see the exposed muscular layer. Uh, so I would like to coagulate this vessel. So just slowly put pressure onto it, but not too uh, big pressure. So you just slowly and coagulate this. Then you will have a good uh, hemostasis even without the need for using any uh, coagulation forceps. Of course, a very large vessel, we would generally prefer um, to use a coagulation forceps. So that one, uh, we can try with this uh, IT knife, but uh, we will need to be so, careful. Uh, for IT2 knife, I usually use swift coagulation uh, with the Erby Vio 300D. And uh, the setting is uh, three effects and max watt 90 at this moment. 90, so it's pretty high effect. Yes, because the uh, IT knife generally has a larger contact surface. So uh, you can actually use a slightly larger um, uh, voltage, max voltage than the uh, usual needle type knife. So for example, if I use the flush knife, uh, I would only use about three and uh, uh, 45. So it's a different setting that we would choose. So for gastric ESD, it's important that we have to coagulate all the ves visible vessel to prevent uh, the chance of delay hemorrhage. So I think this, lead, this uh, vessel is a bit large. So I would uh, maybe use a coag grasper to control it before we uh, uh, cut this vessel.
histology showed a low risk and fully resected early cancer. Here you see the instrument and accessories used and finally we see the recommended reading by the Hong Kong group.